and welcome back to the Gulf of Mexico, one of my favorite places in the world. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some throwback clips from several years ago. Right here was the summer of 2017 and one of the clearest days, even to this day, that I've ever seen. And I remember on this exact dive, I was trying to keep my head tucked so when I got down there, I'd have some bottom time. But as soon as I got a peek at the clarity down there, I just could not resist myself. I'd never seen bottom this clear. So I was looking at every corner, every piece of structure for fish. So I'm down here leveling off at about 55 feet. The bottom was at 63-ish. And look at that giant red snap. bit of a change up here this was actually june of 2016 the first year i'd ever started spearfishing and diving at all and here's an example of that mean green water we get here in the gulf of mexico but surprisingly this is actually really clear for our green water so we got really lucky on this day and i got even luckier by finding this giant tucked in the rig right in there So I thought I stoned this fish, but turns out he was just stunned and he started pulling really hard back. So all that line I pulled in, he ripped back out. And I was actually using a float line here, no reel. I had three wraps of line on my gun with that float line. Holy! But as you can tell, I was excited. This was, if not the first, this was one of, within the first three red snapper I'd ever speared. So I was pretty dang happy. So from here on out, the rest of this video is not gonna be spear fishing. I just wanted to share some clips from years ago that I never really shared in a vlog style. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had fun um, going through the archives and finding these clips. The rest of this video is going to be mainly just an update of what I've been doing and our big announcement at the end of the video. So back to the present here. Offshore unfortunately has been pretty undiveable lately. It's been dirty and the current has been ripping. So I cleaned up my kayak, got it ready and I decided to hit the flats inshore for redfish. Oh, big hit. There we 
we go. All right, we got the anchor out and we're tight. Woo! We'll let that dude wear himself out here. First kayak fish in a long time. Oh, there's another red fish hanging out with him. They don't know what's going on. Nothing like that thump of a red fish. Doesn't get old. All right, Buck. All right, looks like a nice slot redfish. There we go. He engulfed that spoon. Look at that beauty. Stud fighter right there. So quick afternoon drift by the time I got my kayak cleaned up and all my gear ready. It was later in the day and I only had about an hour to fish, but we did get a redfish. I was happy about that. And I wanted to mention the rods I'm using for inshore fishing are by Old 18. Honestly, one of the best rods I've used for inshore. They're just super high quality carbon American made rods. The company is actually based in Texas. So super cool and it's veteran owned. So what a better company to support. And I have links down in the description box below if you want to go check them out. All right, everybody, welcome back. We have a super last minute video, but I've planned on making this video for a while now. Uh, the reason it's last minute is because I just got this thing in the mail. We have a very large and costly unboxing today. And I wanted to make this video uh, as quickly as possible as soon as I got the package so I can show you guys and reveal uh, my plans, what we got going on, why we got this package, and uh, reveal the news for uh, some videos we have up and coming. So we are actually going to the Bahamas in November to do some free dive spear fishing and filming. I'm sure a lot of you guys are spear fishermen, uh, at least if you started watching my spear fishing videos. Those of y'all who are know that in the Bahamas you cannot spear fish with a spear gun, uh, that gun that I use in my diving videos. So that's why I had to order this. You actually have to use pole spears or Hawaiian slings. And uh, it's quite a challenge but it's also a good thing because that means the fish aren't just getting absolutely destroyed down there by spear fishermen. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys what we got here. I made a mass order from Neritic Diving. Uh, that's the gear that the guys I'm going with use and uh, they told me what to get and I ordered it, so let's get into it. All right, here we go. I see some straps. Some of you guys may know what this is if you're a spear fisherman. It's quite an odd looking thing if you have no context. This is actually the band for the pole spear. So um, I'm gonna be using a roller pole spear. That's why it looks so funky. You put your hand in here. I'll just show you guys the spear. But yeah, that's the leash. I guess not the leash, that's the band that we're gonna get set up. But, uh, I don't know, I guess I got two. Yeah, I got a spare band. So just in case something happens, to one of these, I got two. All right, here's the, the meat and potatoes of this video. The thing that literally cost me a fortune to get, but I think will be worth it. Can I get a third band? What in the heck is this? No. I got a third band. I completely forgot what I ordered. Oh, a couple slip tips. Three. So, we got, we have three slip tips here, cable, so the sharks shouldn't steal the tips of these. These are pretty expensive, so you definitely want to uh, have cable if you're in a sharky area. So yeah, we got three bands, so one's gonna be on the spear, we're gonna have two spares. The carbon roller pole spear, we got like four, three or four injector rods, which are actually these metal deals inside that go on the end of the spear. The reason I got extras is because if something gets rocked up where I shoot a big fish, then they can get bent just like a spear shaft. So we're gonna be in the Bahamas. There's not gonna be any dive shops around anywhere to get replacement gear. 
so better to uh, get extra gear in case you do uh, lose stuff or break stuff. There's no going cheap when you're going off grid. Let's just put it that way. This is the roller end. That's pretty cool. This is the first roller pull steer I've ever, uh, or I'm ever gonna use. This thing is carbon fiber, pretty thick actually. Pretty stout pull here. Oh yeah, there we go. All right. Boom. Look at that. Guess if you don't know what that is, you have honestly no idea what to think about it. There's literally five pieces of metal rods that look like long nails. And this is the fanciest pole I've ever seen also here. Super cool blue carbon fiber. Got a nice grip up here. I like that a lot. I guess it's a two piece. Yeah. Two piece is a little bit stronger than a three. Boom, there we go. That is one big stick. Golly, look at the grip way up here by the end. This is without the injector rod, so just imagine how big that thing is. I'm pretty sure this alone is probably eight, nine feet. To be honest, I don't even know, but That's a big stick. Oh my gosh. Can y'all even see how freaking big this is? Is it all in frame? This is massive. But when you are in crystal clear water like that, looking at giant fish, they look a lot closer than they are. So um, it's actually pretty necessary to have a giant spear. Now we just gotta figure out how to do the band. All right, so we got it all set up. We have the line rigged up. So we have this roller band pre-tensioned how I like, and it's gonna stay on the pole spear, not slip off. It's really tightly fastened on there. And we put these knots on the line so that I can adjust it from more pre-tension to my middle setting to uh, less pre-tension. So I think that'll work. It'll do the trick for the Bahamas. What they do on a lot of these pole spears is actually use the shrink wrap, and they put another one down lower and just use the shrink wrap uh, grooves to, to fasten the Dyneema around and keep it on there. But I didn't have an extra grip down here and I didn't really feel like making one, so we just kind of rigged this up. It's pretty simple and uh, like I said, it should work, should do the trick. All right, we just got the pole spear rigged up. Blake tied me a little uh, adjustment line so I can adjust the pretension. Anchor line, I guess you can call it. And we're gonna see how this thing shoots. First time shooting a roller pole spear. We're also seeing which uh, pretension uh, mark I should put it on so I can hold the spear up on this grip. Pretty tough to get up to the front, so we might loosen the hair, but here's how fast it goes. Hopefully I don't destroy the end of the pool. I'm also not locking my arm out. I'm scared to let it go or not slow it down. Right, I'm gonna lock my arm out this time so it ought to go a hair faster. Pretty quick. There you go, that about wraps up the unboxing. Not much else to show y'all. I hopped in the pool to test out our little configuration for the pretension and to check the speed on this thing. And let me tell you, this thing rips for the size of it the heaviness of it i was very impressed with how fast it is and i think we're gonna actually get some pretty dang good range so uh, looking forward to testing it out i'm actually gonna go get a foam target or a foam pool toy from walmart tomorrow and then we're gonna hop in the pool and test out the penetration so if you guys are interested in seeing kind of the performance results from this thing stay tuned for that that's the pole spear i got a real nice grip right here to hold on to shrink wrapped and then up here they have a really good design uh, so we can detach the slip tip and pull the line through instead of pushing the slip tip back back out of the fish of course down here we got our 
roll thick 5 16ths or 8 millimeter injector rods, a couple extra bands, some slip tips, and then I got a leash that is not in this package. Check this thing out. In this little bag, we've got a brand new drone. It is about dang time, right? I thought might as well get one before we go to the Bahamas since I want to get some super cool over the top shots, bird's eye view shots. This is the cheapest, best bang for the buck drone I can find. It's a DJI Mini and we are test flying it for the very first time right now. Considering that I had my last one get dumped into the ocean, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on one. Take off. The low point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Alrighty, got another boat update for you guys to finish off this video. Here are some clips of Keith, the owner of Waterman Boatworks, glassing in some new sheets on the bow. This is actually matte glass. It's like the super random scattered shards of glass. And you can see them here just sealing it up. Here's a visual of that matte glass prior to getting rolled onto the bow. Here Keith is actually prepping it, getting it ready to lay the glass on. Once he lays the glass on, he rolls it again and it'll all seal together real nicely. So everything is coming out super clean. Here's a shot of new glass going on the gunnels. I thought it was really cool to watch him rolling it on there and it just kind of sealing and bonding and becoming a new layer of the boat basically. So really cool to watch. From here on out, I'm just going to add some music and roll a montage so you guys can watch the process of adding glass and whatnot to the boat. And you see how this stuff is real green and you see how it's almost black? Uh-huh. It's getting ready to go off. It's getting ready to drop, start drying. In the bucket is because the bucket, it's an exotherm uh, reaction. You put a chemical and it works with heat. Uh-huh. And it'll get it'll get so hot you can also start fires with it. Really? Like when I Take when I syrup. get done with a big glass session. At the end of the day, I have to sit around, stay here for 20, 30 minutes just to make sure nothing's going to catch on fire. I've never had a fire. Wow. I'm find some wood to knock on. Yeah. But I know a lot of people that have. If you guys remember, we did take the stiffeners out and Keith actually began installing new ones, as you can see right here. Look at this, y'all. Got new glass over the gunnels, over the sidewalls. This thing is really beefed up. <laughs> 